Welcome back. ResverLogix is developing safe, affordable, first in its class epigenetic therapies for people with all kinds of various ailments, heart disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and other life-threatening illnesses. And here to talk more about this is the CEO and founder, uh, Donald McCaffrey. Welcome. Thank you very much. So the first question I have is epigenetic. Can you explain <laughs> what that is? Sure. Genetics, we all know our genetics. It's your DNA. And epi in Latin means above, so it's above genetics. I like to refer to it as your genetics is the, the computer, the hardware. Epigenetics is the software, okay. turning those genes on or off. Ah, interesting. And that's mainly what you're working with, that kind of science. That's correct. Okay. So let's backtrack a little bit and tell me exactly what you're doing and all the different diseases that you're going to be dealing with and treating. Well, a lot of these, the diseases are really quite similar, and they just manifest in different organs. Now, drug development over the years has been based on, on proteins. And you have your DNA, then it's transcribed into messenger RNA, and that messenger RNA tells the body what proteins to make. So about 95 plus percent of drugs are based on proteins. Mm. They're trying to raise a protein or lower a protein which is a really good approach mm -hmm. if and only if your disease is single protein related. Okay. So that's why so many diseases that we know about like cardiovascular and diabetes and chronic kidney disease, they don't have any really strong medications in those areas because they are multi-protein related. So we figured out a way of just below DNA when it transcribes into messenger RNA What's happened in our patients is something's corrupted that message. So the original DNA message is no longer being transcribed down into messenger RNA. And that can happen from disease, from diet, from environment. It doesn't really matter how it happens, the fact that it did happen. We've developed a drug that's, that fits in the binding pocket of the bromo domain and removes it from, from the inflammation site and therefore lowers dozens and hundreds of proteins at the same time. So talk to me from the perspective of a diabetic or somebody with one of these diseases. So walk me through the process. I'm dealing with this. How do I even get introduced to your drug? How it, is it a pill? Is it an injection? I mean, how does the whole thing work and what kind of treatment could I expect? Yes, it is a small molecule pill that you okay. take twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Okay. So it's a very affordable drug. It's back to the small molecules, not the biologics. So this isn't one of the drugs that costs $100,000 a year or something like that. It's back to their basic, basic small molecule hmm. development pricing. Okay, well, that's key. Well, um, especially because, in this environment. Well, that's right. I mean, we know that there's a lot of pressure on lawmakers. From, it's bipartisan, too, um, to lower costs of drugs. So how do you feel about that? Do you think Congress is on the right track with I do. I think Congress and the Senate, uh, former Senator Joe Donnelly worked on the uh, Rights to Try bill. Okay. Uh, I uh, was involved in that. I was involved in the 21st Century Cures Act as well. Mm -hmm. And I think these programs are on the right track mm -hmm. because new science doesn't have to be more expensive science. Now, and technology seems to also be doing its part in lowering the cost of drugs as well and, and even advancing research in medicine. Oh, very much yeah. so. The the. We've been working on this program for 19 years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's advanced quite a bit in the last five or six, and that's basically based on technology. The Bromo domain itself wasn't even really known until about 15 years ago, and it was part of a government program where the, uh, working through the uh, uh, s further study of epigenetics that Bromo domain was picked to study. So. The fact that the government actually got that one right and en enabled us to better understand what was going on really helped advance our mm -hmm. program. So um, are these actually being used by physicians and by patients at this moment? Is it widespread? Uh, right now we're just finishing phase three. Okay. So it's a, it's a clinical trial in phase three in 200 sites around the world mm -hmm. in 18 different countries. And we started in November of 2015 and uh, we should be wrapping that trial up within a week okay. or two. Wow. So it's very exciting. It's a trial based on um, uh, events. So we have half our placebo and half our dosed on drug. And as soon as we have 250 
heart attacks, strokes, or death, then we can go in and compare the, the two sides. Unfortunately, I feel a little ghoulish at times because I've been cheering for heart attacks, strokes, and death. <laughs> but we're just about at the 250 yeah. mark, and okay. it, is, uh, it is very uh -huh. exciting for us. And then how do you see the, the rest of this year, maybe your short-term plan next couple of years? For well, as we roll out the data, um, it takes about three to four months to prepare all the statistics, wind up the patients with their last visits, okay. make sure everything medical has been done properly. And then we can announce, probably in the, in the fall, uh, exactly what has happened, uh, the results. And of course, uh, from there, this is a registration trial in both Europe and uh, FDA. Okay. So uh, with successful data, we'll be able to move towards commercialization. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, You're John, for coming. Very interesting and best of luck. And keep us updated because it's important work Will that you're do. doing. So, And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.